Hey everyone, it's Foot Forward here. It is April 8th, I believe, today, uh, 2017, and this is a call that I promised. Um, I have some stuff to get to, and we'll go from there. Um, just asking for the Holy Spirit to have his way, whatever he would like to come out of my mouth. Let's go with that. Um, okay, so... March 21st has come and gone, as a lot of you are aware, and back in 2014, 2015, I knew it wasn't the right time. Um, The year was wrong, stuff hadn't added up, and I knew March 21st was not specifically for those years. 2016 wasn't even on my radar because I knew it wasn't time. Um, When 2017 came... I knew Trump had become president like I'd saw in my dream. So I knew we had met the first part of that. Kim sign about Kim Clement, uh, his sign about the Dow at 20,000 and uh, rain in California, the drought ending um, and Trump becoming president, all these things converging at a similar time frame. This wasn't a coincidence. We know the time, we know the season. Um, And while we're at it, I should do a disclaimer. I do not endorse the Iraq dinar. I do not suggest that anyone invest in any currencies, make any currency plays. This information is not to be used for that purpose, and I am not specifically endorsing any currency. I'm not suggesting any investment strategies. I am just speaking freely from my own mind. I think that about covers it. So when March 21st came and went and I didn't see the RV like I was expecting, the Lord spoke to me the next morning when I woke up and said, I hadn't missed it. I was angry. I was like, I was not a very pleasant person that day. Um, I didn't understand what God was talking about. I didn't understand what he meant by, I didn't miss it. To be honest, I still don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. Part of this doesn't add up. But in my spirit, I know I didn't miss it. And some of you were angry at me because it didn't manifest. It didn't happen on the 21st. We don't know what we don't know yet. And God has specifically told me, I don't really care about this part, but he's told me that he will vindicate what he showed me. I don't care about that part. I would like this to happen as God needs it to happen. I sleep very well at night knowing I spoke exactly what I saw, spoke exactly what God told me to say. I have no qualms about that. I didn't miss this. I don't know how to explain that. I can't. I can't go tell you, like, I don't know. It would be a lot easier for me to go beat myself up, tell you all I missed it. We could have a shame fest, but that's not what's in my heart at all. So... I don't know how to explain this, but when the RV manifests, when this happens, it will be self-evident at that time. Stuff will come out. We'll know more about what transpired on that day. Um, But what God had put on my heart at that point was you can't have an end without a beginning. And in the end of my dream, the plane took off. So it was leaving Iraq and it was destined to go to America. On March 21st, something transpired. I don't know what. I can't get into specifics on that. Um, And I think that's for the best. But that plane clearly took off in my dream. God said you can't have a landing without a takeoff. So right now, this thing is in process. There's a process that's been initiated. And as far as God is concerned, you can't separate the beginning from the end god is the alpha and omega the beginning and the end he's in this whole part so as far as he's concerned this is a done deal it's been finished i can't fully articulate that and i'm sorry i wish i could but as best as i understand it the plane is taken off this is coming to america this is coming to bless people significantly things are in motion and Right now, Satan, metaphorically speaking, is trying to shoot this thing out of the air. That's why you're seeing so much confrontation, so much chaos, so much going on. And there's a bunch of things that tie together here. Um, 
this is not the end of the world. Donald Trump has not triggered World War III. This was probably about five years ago. We were in a prayer meeting um, on a Wednesday night, and the Lord gave me a word that there would be a spring which would spring up in a place that had no spring, which was the Arab Spring. I later um, pieced that part together. And that that would be a sign of a season leading up to a season where three kings of the north would be dealt with. Specifically, what I saw was Russia, uh, Syria, and North Korea. With the Syrian flag, I also saw a black flag at that time, which now makes sense that we know ISIS is in existence. So the Syrian flag was half Syria, half ISIS. That is what I saw. Um, the problem in Syria is not with Assad or with ISIS. It is with a spirit there that's in operation there. This also ties into another prophecy I had. Um, this was probably 2012, 2013. Um, God had told me that a bear would walk through the city. And when this occurred, it would be on the news for hours and days. And it would dominate the news cycle um, because nobody would know how to deal with the bear. That bear turned out to be Russia invading Ukraine. And when that happened, for days, that was on the news. Nobody knew how to deal with Putin. Nobody knew exactly what was going on, what the motivation was. It seemed really bizarre. The second half of that prophecy was that God was going to deal with Russia in an unusual fashion and that he would uh, make it so that it was on the news again for days and weeks at a time. Um, we have not seen that yet. When God deals with Russia, this is going to be a story that dominates the news cycles for days. Not hours, days. This will be the number one story when this occurs. How exactly that transpires, I don't know. But God is dealing with Russia. What's going on with Syria ties in with Russia, ties in with North Korea. And it's bizarre because I don't see Russia as the ultimate problem. I know God has a destiny for Russia. <coughs> I agree with what Chris Vallotton prophesied a while ago over Russia, that Russia is going to become a big brother to Israel, that Russia and America are going to partner together for the good of the world. Um, so I believe something drastic is going to happen to turn um, Russia's heart as a nation, as a country, as a government, and that God is going to bring America and Russia together. They're going to work together, and there's a lot of things that are going to work, uh, be really worthwhile looking forward to. God is going to deal with a lot of spiritual principalities that have been ruling over nations and over areas, and there's a lot of breakthrough coming. But in order to have breakthrough, you have to break through something. And in the natural, a lot of that is going to manifest in war. Kim Clement had prophesied a few years ago um, about 10 short wars, that they would be short in terms of duration, but that they would be quite fierce. Um, there's a number of countries I expect we are going to see conflict in. Um, there are several in the Middle East. I don't really feel that I should release those specifically. Um, but it's going to be very evident when it happens. And North Korea is going to be dealt with, and North and South Korea will actually join up and become one country, and I believe that's going to happen this year. Things are going to be fairly tumultuous between now and whenever the RV happens. Um, my perception is it's going to be this summer. I haven't been given a specific word on that. That's piecing together a lot of what is going on. What I always saw um, around the time of the RV with that there would be a lot of chaos. America would be involved with specific strikes against specific nations. Syria was not the nation I saw. However, it was one in the Middle East. It is one that is not friendly to Israel. And it is one uh, that has been developing weapons programs. 
Some of you will know what country that is. I don't feel I should say any more than that about that specific thing. Um, but God is going to deal with that nation in particular. Um, and there's going to be a shift in a lot of these countries. So God is dealing with a lot of these principalities, a lot of these um, things that are keeping people in bondage and releasing them. So things are actually going to get a lot better in these Middle Eastern countries, a lot better in Russia, a lot better in Israel, a lot better in America. I'll tell you, America's best days are just around the corner. This next 15-year period that is occurring right now in America, they're going to refer to it as the second gold rush. That is how prosperous this is going to be. It's not just going to be about the gold that they're going to discover. Um, this is going to be referred to as the most prosperous time America has ever seen. And things are really going to change. You're going to see um, explosive blessings, technology come forth. Um, it's going to be really clear that God's blessing is on Israel, America, and Russia in particular. When Russia has this turn. So, for people living in fear, don't. This is not the end of the world. It is not that time yet. God is not coming for a bride who's timid and frightened and is looking for deliverance from ISIS. That is not when God is returning. God is looking for us to be a prosperous people, to be strong, and to be manifesting his kingdom on the earth. It's really clear in the parable of the talents and the mitas. Um, God uses this parable to show... He's given talents to a few different people. And one guy has five. He goes and doubles it to five. Another has two. He goes and doubles it to two. When they bring that back to the master, he is very pleased with them because they've gone out and done something with it. The guy that went and buried his in a field and brought it back, he was uh, rebuked when he brought it back. And what he had was taken from him and given to the guy that had the ten talents. So God took the talent from the least productive person and gave it to the most productive person as a reward and because he was doing the most with that talent. The minas, again, um, it's a little bit different of a parable, um, but the same principle. When they were given minas, when the master came back, these people went to him and said, Master, your minas have made more minas. Chris Vallotton has a really good teaching on that. And that's what I had listened to, and it made me realize we're supposed to take what God gives us and multiply and grow it, and we're supposed to learn how to make money work for us. So I'm saying this because a lot of people have made the comment that they're going to go hide out in the mountains, they're going to go hide out somewhere, and they're just going to wait out the end of the earth and basically go build a fortress. That's the wrong mindset. If you're going into hiding, God will take everything from you, and he will give it to somebody who's going to use it efficiently for the kingdom of God. So the mindsets need to change of a lot of people. We've got a lot of time left on the earth yet. And these are going to be really great times. But for people who go out in hiding, you won't have anything uh, for a very long time. It's a season of acceleration. And if people aren't stewarding things wisely, God will take it from them. And give it to people who are stewarding things wisely. So that's where things sit right now. Um, I am not concerned at all about what is going on. Things are going according to plan God's plan. We need to pray for nations to be turned into sheep nations. We need to pray for Donald Trump's protection. So Lord, we just say protect that man, protect um, his staff, let not one hair on his head be harmed at all, at any time. And we just come into agreement with your will for America and the nations of the earth. There's not a whole lot of other intel at this point to talk about. That's really all I have for today. So um, please feel free to share this call as you guys see fit. And um, I will do another call when God prompts me to do so, and I don't know when that'll be. In the meantime, thank you for listening. God bless you guys, and I will talk with you later.